Hey guys, Tisha here, and we are back for another Sister Lives rewatch. This is season five, the first episode, The Polygamous Death Threat. Go ahead and grab a drink. Got mine. We're going to be here for a little while because I noticed that a lot of these episodes are at least 40 minutes long. And you all know that sometimes I get a little detail with my notes. I cut some parts out because... TLC has a tendency to show us a lot of clips that we've already seen, but you guys will remember if you haven't gotten a chance to watch what went on in this episode. So we get reminded of how the family culture has been crumbling since they've been in Vegas. That at one point the kids were not just siblings, but they were like best friends. And now that they are all in four separate homes that aren't directly next to each other, that they don't get to see each, each other as often, which means that their dynamic has changed. But the parents are working on finding a way for them to be together soon. We hear that the ladies are working on their credit. And we know based on the last episode of season four that they have 30 days to get their credit in order because they put down earnest money for the land in the lot. We then go to Christine and Christine lets us know that this is her very first time paying bills like utilities on her own. She said it was something that she never had to take care of because Janelle did it. And I was sitting there and I said, you know what? Think about that. Christine at this point has six children. We can assume that she's been married for 18 years. And this is her first time paying bills for the first time. She's never paid bills before. I'm not saying that this is just something that happens in a polygamous family because it doesn't. There are some people who've never paid bills before. But I do believe that regardless if you're married or not, it is something that you should experience. You should definitely have something in your name because financial responsibility is important. And to be learning that when you're in your, I'm going to say mid thirties um, to early forties at this point, because I'm not sure the difference between the ages, that's a big deal. We find out from Christine that both her credit and Mary's credit is okay, but Janelle and Robin's credit aren't. I don't quite understand how with Janelle being the one who's supposed to be the financially responsible one, that her credit is bad. I don't know if it's because so many things were in her name and maybe they've ended some leases or they took out some loans or whatever, but her credit is bad, according to Christine. We then see Robin, who is going to what appears to be an attorney. She's letting us know that she does have a horrible credit, but it's not her fault. It's all because of her divorce. She said that basically she took on all this debt because it created peace in her divorce. Robin is a liar. And the truth ain't in her. Yes, I said ain't. And I might say that a few times because I am just seeing more and more how Robin manages to make up things, to lie about things, to claim things happen that didn't really happen. And I really and truly believe that Robin did not take on all the debt that she claims that she took on and that the debt that she did take on was just things that were in her name. Um, which name? I don't know because as we later found out, she has three different last names. Let that soak in. We see her, as I said, go to a lawyer. We found out that she married Cody in May of 2010 and she was divorced in 2008. So she wasn't even divorced for two years before she started seeing Cody. She wasted no time to find this family. I don't care what narrative they give us, and I've said it in earlier reviews. Robin sought them out. Robin knew that they were going to be on TV, and she maximized 
And I ain't, look, I'm, I'm gonna give her props for it. She did what some of us can't do. She managed to find a sugar daddy and some sugar mamas because she's 10 years younger than all of them and she's milking all of them. So go, go Robin. Even though I don't care for her, go Robin. The fact that the turnaround with her getting married and divorced is so quick, I'm starting to think maybe her and Christine do have something in common. <laughs> I'm just playing. They don't have much in common. Okay. Robin lets the attorney know that the loan officer said that she needs to bring up her credit score to at least a 600 to qualify for her home loan. Robin wasn't paying anything. If her credit score is that low and we hear it's that bad, that she needs to bring it up to at least a 600. She says she wants someone, which is why she's coming to the attorney, to come in and work with her creditors. I don't I'm not the person who would understand this. I don't understand the difference between the attorney and the guy that the attorney hired, but some kind of way they're working together in order to help fix um, Robin's credit. Between the attorney and the credit person, she wants this done in a couple of weeks. Marion Confessionals lets us know that no one is looking at each other and saying, you're holding us up because of your credit that right now the main focus is that they all work together to get this done. Cody agrees. Robin says that her previous marriage was really, really hard and she just wants to get past all of it and she doesn't want to be the reason that they can't get it. If they can't get it, it doesn't have anything to do with your previous marriage, Robin. It has everything to do with you. We then see Janelle, who is meeting Mona on the property to find out ways to build a cheaper home. This is where I got upset, you guys. And we're going to talk about it a little bit further down below. She lets us know that bedrooms, multiple bedrooms, cost more money. And that her family spends a lot of time in the common areas. So she doesn't feel that the bedrooms are as important to the point where not only does she want to eliminate some of the bedrooms, but she doesn't want to have like a private dining room area. She wants to have like an open kitchen where she can put a dining room table in there for them to gather and eat because even that dining room will create additional cause. She says that Cody thinks that they should have at least five bedrooms upstairs and convert the office space that's downstairs for Savannah. Now, I don't understand, I, I, because Savannah's not the only girl, Maddie's a girl too. I don't understand why you would want to put the youngest child downstairs all by themselves. That makes absolutely no sense to me. So I already know that Janelle couldn't have thought that was a good idea. She says that her boys are just going to have to be okay with sharing a room but unlike cody she's looking at the next 10 years and she doesn't believe with college and everything that her children are gonna stay home so they went through all of this stuff with building these homes you cannot tell me that with all the thought that janelle was putting into building these homes that janelle didn't think that that was going to be where they stay for a long time which makes me feel like the Flagstaff move was exactly what we thought or I thought. And it came out of nowhere and they only did it because of Dayton. Because Dayton was looking at colleges out there. Just my opinion. We then hear from Janelle how she used to resent Mary because she always made the most money. But Mary has the more expensive taste and Mary tends to not be as financially responsible as her. She says that Mary would go and get certain things with her money, but Janelle was unable to get certain things with hers because unlike Mary, Janelle was responsible for a big chunk of the household expenses, which we know in season one, we found out that Janelle was the was helping Cody pay the mortgage. Whatever that was, she paid it and Mary was responsible for some of the utility bills. So Mary has all this house with just her and Leon. Janelle has all her house. Christine has a little bit of house, but Janelle is paying a bulk of the bills which kind of also puts things into perspective as to the way the house structure was set up. But either way, the point is Janelle put in more money, but Mary spending more money. Janelle to me sitting there saying that she used to resent Mary. 
I don't believe that. I'm going to tell you right now, still in this moment, I think that Janelle still resents Mary. And the fact that she's telling us about this whole thing again, while she's looking at these homes, is think, making me think she has every reason to resent Mary. Mary is going to get a house that is the same size as what the other wives who have multiple kids are going to get. So even though Janelle has a much larger family than Mary, they have the same budget for their household. How could that not bother you? That would make me feel a way. <laughs> it's funny. Um, my boyfriend and I were talking about what it would look like if we merged households. Just just throwing it, he was throwing it out there. And one of the things that we talked about, because obviously I wouldn't I wouldn't be moving him in here. He has a home uh, that he owns and pays a mortgage on. It would make more sense for me and my child to move with him. And we were talking about like, what would that look like? Because he makes, you know, significantly more money than I do. And because it's a package deal, myself and my child moving in and he was talking about you know all I would expect for you to pay is the utilities and I was like I wouldn't feel right doing that I think that it's okay and it's to each his own everybody can do what they want to do I wouldn't mind going half on the utilities and half on the mortgage it's not right for you to have to pay the full mortgage and myself and my child are coming in here this is just a, a talk but that is the conclusion I came to with it being just myself and my child. I feel like Mary's selfish. And I, I always felt like Mary was selfish about some things. But this really, really made me feel like she was selfish because they kept using the whole kid thing as a reason to why if Mary had more kids, then she would have a bigger home. But Mary doesn't have more kids. So Mary, to me, should have never had the same budget as the other ladies. It's not fair. I kind of don't think it was fair for Robin to come in and get the stuff too. But I guess at this point, they have this show and Robin is contributing and supposedly working with this marketing thing that the whole family is working with. So I'm going to leave that part of it alone. But for Mary to have the same exact budget as the other wives, that would create resentment for me. Janelle says that after utilizing Mary's home and seeing, you know, the, the rental property that she has, that it's been a blessing for them. So Janelle wants us to believe that just because this house has a big gathering space and that the gathering space has been a blessing, that she's no longer concerned about the money, that doesn't even sound right. You told us that while she was sitting there paying all this money for her house when it was just her and her child you were sitting there wondering how you were going to feed your children that type of stuff doesn't go away within a matter of 30 days because let's be clear it was an issue for a while she claims that mary saying that she would have a larger home if she had more kids made her change her perspective about it I don't buy that, but okay, Janelle. I am looking at Janelle a little differently, y'all. I gotta be real. I think that Janelle lied about some things. I think that Janelle uh, suppresses a lot of her emotions just because she doesn't want to deal with the conflict of it all. And I feel like in this instance, Janelle is lying because there's no way that all of a sudden out of nowhere, after all these years that you've been paying more than her, that you're okay with it. I don't buy it. Y'all let me know down in the comment section what you think. I think it created resentment. I think it created a lot of resentment. And I think that she had every reason to resent all of them. Maybe not Christine because Christine was helping out with her children. And Christine seemed to be there more for her children emotionally than Janelle even was. And you can't buy that. So I think she had every reason to resent Mary. I wrote in my notes, how is it fair for Janelle who makes more money than Mary and has more children than Mary to get the same budget as Mary. That sounds like punishment for Janelle and reward for Mary. Janelle says it's not fair to penalize Mary for not having children. 
as I said before, the children don't have anything to do with it, in my opinion. If it was me and my son, I wouldn't feel right moving into a five bedroom home when and getting the same exact budget as someone else who has six children. I just don't, I don't agree with it. I think it's really selfish of Mary and I don't like it. I, I don't even think that it should have been a discussion. Yes, have what you want in your home. Get your wet bar that you want so badly, but you're not going to get five bedrooms. I want more kids and I don't have them. I'm being Mary right now. I want more kids and I don't have them. So I don't feel like I should be punished. I feel like I should be given a huge house with all these rooms that are going to remain empty. That's still not going to make me feel fulfilled because I don't have the kids for those rooms. Doesn't make sense. Um, I don't understand why Janelle is still doing a lot of the family record keeping because she's sitting there at the computer and writing stuff down and saying that if everything is being uh, divided up equally, let them keep their own records. We find out then that the fitness center is being put on hold because there was a lot of money that had to be involved as a startup. They're going to go ahead and pursue the sister wife's closet because unlike the gym, it's an online business. It doesn't require for them to rent a property or get equipment and all that other things. It's basically cheaper. So we see the adults head to a studio to do a professional shoot for the sister wife's closet website. And of course, this too becomes an issue because Cody does not think that he should be a part of the pictures based on the fact that it's called a sister wife's closet and the name doesn't really include him. He says that this is SWC is about women power and why would you have a man if you're talking about women power and Christine points out that they should be seen as a unit and even in other businesses where a woman runs it you still see her husband and all this other stuff and she's raising up some good points but the problem that Christine tends to have and what I'm watching is Christine tends to get snarky or or she just she she's a little bit combative sometimes with Cody so she gets a little snippy and she says can we just take the pictures and talk about it later I'm here my makeup's done my hair is done and I'm getting sweaty as much as I like Christine I'm seeing more and more that at times the problem was her mouth you cannot expect for this man to respect you to listen to you to want to come to you when you do not use the correct tone with him not only do you not use the correct tone with him you do it in situations where you legit embarrass him you can tell why she's doing it in that moment with the wives around with the production crew around with the man who is supposed to be the top in his field who's the photographer with all of them around you can tell that he's annoyed based on his response and the look that he gets in his face and how he stares off in the distance as he's looking like someone who just took his favorite toy. I'm going to say the word wrong, but you... To, no, I'm not even going to say it because I'm going to say it wrong. You're not allowing him to rest in his, uh, his manhood. You're, you're taking it away. You're knocking a peg off. You're just... You're talking to him like he's one of your kids. And I don't like how Cody talks to the wives some of the times. But I have to also be fair and point out the instances where I see that the wives speak to him in a certain way too. The, t the photographer takes a whole bunch of pictures. He says that just when I was about to be finished, I was told that I need to take more pictures. Because Mary lets it be known that they have to switch because Janelle and her can't always be next to him. The fact that this has to be considered as something, as a rule, by taking a simple picture is draining to me. I get that they want equal time and respect, but it's a picture that's going on a website. 
you're not going to put every single picture up there. So who cares? The photographer, who is very eclectic, at least that's what he seems to be, says that he's never encountered anything like that. He's not used to that, but he understands that each woman needs to feel respected. They spent so much time taking these pictures, but I think that they should have talked to someone else about their branding because you're taking all these pictures and you didn't point out that the clothing you're wearing is going to be offered in the sister wives closet or you didn't have on any of the jewelry pieces or any of that so for them to be taking so many pictures of them to put on this website i already think that the branding is off because what are you selling you're, or you're not selling yourselves so what's going on robin talks about how they wanted the pictures to show the differences for in each woman which is why they took all these different pictures as a consumer i don't care about what y'all look like I care about what your product looks like and I can't see your product by what you're doing. What I would love to see is if one of the shirts, like the shirt that Janelle has on, if that's something that's being sold, I would like to see that shirt on Janelle. And then I'd also like to see that shirt on Robin to determine whether or not I want to buy it because you can't tell here, but she got, a, she got some, I can't believe I just really lifted up my breast. <laughs> Forgive me. I, <laughs> I'm getting too comfortable with you guys. I have a lot of this. So show me <laughs> what I'm buying. Let me see the merchandise so I could determine whether or not that will look good on my body type. But don't show me just pictures of y'all standing there. We hear again about how... I still can't believe I just did that. We hear again about how they feel like this business is going to help them buy these homes. And Cody was the main one who said it. And that is the most delusional thing I've ever heard. You have this jewelry and it's not just you that's doing it. You have a vendor that's not like your vendor is local at a jewelry store. I don't know what the agreed upon rate is for what he gets versus what they get, but it's only so many proceeds you're going to make from this jewelry that a lot of us don't want. We see Madison and she's hanging out with some of her friends and Janelle is reminding us of how hard it was for Madison to move from Utah and how when she said it that Madison said she wasn't going and you can't make her go. Madison is in the confessional looking sad, saying that she misses Utah a lot and she misses her friends, but she's trying. The way that these children suffered from this move from Utah to Vegas, I would have never, if I was in the parent's position, been willing to take a chance of damaging my family further by making another abrupt move like what they did when they moved from Vegas to Flagstaff. It doesn't seem fair. And I really think that that move was the final nail in the coffin for their family. Janelle says she wishes that at Maddie's age that she had the type of backbone that she has because Maddie talks about like her friends and how some of them are this way and some of them are that way, but she doesn't judge them and she's going to make her own decisions. They talk about the religion. Maddie makes it known that she has no desire to be a part of their religion, unlike her sibling, Leon. She does not want to share her husband and she doesn't think it's for her. Were they hoping that over time that if they asked the kids this question that their answer would change? Because it seems like this question is always being asked of the children. I can say that we've heard this at least four different times now and I'm tired of it. So the children have got to be tired of hearing it. Cody claims that even though uh, Madison does not wish to be a polygamist, that you can still be a part of their faith and not be a polygamist. I thought the goal was polygamy. I thought the goal was to have multiple wives. What is it? I'm confused. Maddie again says she isn't like Leon. Maddie says she hangs out with kids that party from time to time and Leon hangs out with a bunch of Mormons. And the way she said it, she wants no parts. 
We hear again about how um, the parents have encouraged them to have a strong relationship with God. But then we hear like from Logan, how Logan said that his mother wanted him to be with the Mormons. And one of the reasons why he was picking a particular area of study was because it's what his mom wanted. So I think that they tell us one thing, but they do another. And I think as hard as it is for me to say it, that Janelle was guilty of that at times. I'm seeing the wishy-washiness, especially in season 18 with how she's going back and forth about her and Cody's relationship. So I very much so believe that she did the same thing with her children. We then see Robin and her sister, quick abbreviation, Tara. And Tara is there to be a nanny for Robin. So at this very, very early stage, before she had another child, when she had the three, and then she added Solomon. She needed a nanny. And from what they're saying, Robin has always had a nanny. I don't know how true that is, but that's what they're saying. Um, at a very early age, she needed these nannies. And I just feel like, for what? She says because she's working. But I, I don't know. I just don't feel like she was really doing a whole bunch of marketing. But that's what she's saying, so whatever. Why we didn't ever see them go to work? We saw Janelle leave for work, but we didn't see any of the, Cody kind of left for work, but I don't recall seeing Robin leave for work. Okay, anyways, they meet Harry Jacobs. This is the, the creditor guy that's going to help her with her debt, the credit repair guy. We hear once again that she took on this debt to keep peace in court because she wasn't going to fight it. I do not believe it. As I said earlier, she said she moved from Montana to Utah to live with her mother for nine months. You move to Montana and you live with your mom for nine months. And she adds that the whole entire time she was working. So you were working for nine months, living with your mom and you couldn't pay any of your debt. Yes, you can save, but you could have paid something. You could put $50 on something. She then lets us know that after the nine months, she got her own apartment, but she didn't have anything extra to pay her debts. We hear that she has a $4,000 credit card uh, debt and that she won't be able to get a home loan with anything in collection over a thousand dollars. I don't know how true that is. I don't know what the difference is between a thousand dollars being on a credit card and a thousand dollars being in collections. Maybe because on the credit card you're still making payments. By the time it goes to the collections, you're you haven't made payments. I don't know. But either way, the loan officer well, he's not the loan officer. The credit repair guy reached out to the company and they're going to delete that $4,000 debt. And Robin is so excited and so amazed by this. I really think that TLC helped with all of this or something, or they were lying about some of this debt. I think that her husband had way more debt from the marriage than she did, but Robin is great at spinning things. So this is the narrative that she gave us. So we're going to halfway go with it. We find out that Robin has three last names and she's been under the radar for a while. Now, if Robin has been working, as soon as she moved with her mom, she was working. For nine months, she was living there, she was working. And then when she moved out on her own, she was working. How are you under the radar? Under the radar means that you haven't made any type of financial moves in a while. You see what I'm saying about how that doesn't make sense? But these are the lies that she's telling. She says that she didn't intentionally mean to have three last names. But the reason why Robin has three last names is because she has the actual last name that she was given by her biological father, right? Then she has the last name that she was given by her stepfather, who I don't remember if he adopted her or whatever, but he must have adopted her because she got that last name. Then at one point, she had the name that she was given from her husband. So there we have three last names. She then says that she's been off the radar because she's been trying to sever ties with her ex. That makes no sense. Y'all are divorced. 
let you tell it. The decree was you gonna take off, you gonna take on this debt, and he's gonna take on whatever he's gonna take on. So what ties do y'all have other than the children who you've removed from the state that was near him and you've moved here to go play daddy with Cody too? She then tells us that the creditors were calling and she didn't have any heat. She had to build a fire with wood and she had no stove basically and she didn't have anything extra, anything to give a sob story. I don't care about none of it and I don't believe Robin. You can show me a picture of a trailer all you want to. There's some really, really nice trailers. There's plenty of trailers that I've seen that may look one way on the outside but are beautiful on the inside. And even if they're not, it's a home. There are people who don't even have that. But you want to give your sob story about how you you didn't have heat. Honey, it's a lot of people who don't have heat. There's people who whose heat, their, their thermos doesn't work. And guess what they use to heat up their whole home? Uh, the stove, the oven, a, a plug-in heater. So we're not going to go that route with the woe is Robin, poor Robin Rowe. We're not doing it. I'm I'm so over Robin. If you want to see another reason why I'm over Robin, go check out my uh, Say What video part two with McKelty because McKelty revealed some things about Robin on accident that really had me ticked off today. I did the, the video as soon as I got home from work. That's how, <laughs> that's how upset I was from it. So watch it if you haven't watched it. But back to this. We get to Mary and Cody because Leon is a great child and they're so blessed to have Leon and Leon is being inducted into the National Honor Society which Leon says looks good on college apps. Leon is not lying. My son was inducted. I gotta brag on him right quick and I was excited because I knew what that was like. I remember how it was with me. They had him do a whole application and had to get recommendations from both teachers and community leaders and to see some of the things that um, people wrote about him. It just warmed my heart. It made me feel like, ooh, Tisha, you're doing something right. So it is a big honor. Um, we hear that Leon wants to go to Utah for school and Leon wants to become a doctor. Even though Leon is going to have sister wives, Leon feels like it can be done. Mary says that she is sad that she'll be all alone, but she wants the best for Leon. And Leon says, you can choose whether or not you're an empty nester. Now, you guys, I don't know if some of you are going to get mad with what I'm going to say. But if you know me, if you've watched me long enough, you know I'm going to say it either way. And we can have a friendly discussion in the comments below. We'll both re be respectful about our opinions. But I'm going to say this. I do not like when children are involved in adult conversations. There is no reason why Leon should be making statements like that to their mom about what they can and can't do with their body. Leon continues about how they hope that their mom isn't an empty nester and that their mom uh, could have more kids if they decide, if she decides to have more kids through Robin, who's offered to do surrogacy and how uh, Leon's mom just needs to take up Robin's offer. Y'all, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering, but I'm really trying to make sure that I use the correct pronouns for Leon. So it has me stumbling over my words. Leon says, for as long as they can remember, they prayed every single night for a baby for their mom. And now they feel like their mom has a choice. And if Mary chooses not to, she's taken away something from all of them. And she doesn't understand why she wouldn't take advantage of this offer. There's a lot that I want to say about that. I don't know if Leon is so opinionated because they've watched the show or if Leon is so opinionated because they've allowed Leon to be a part of discussions that Leon should not have been. But you are not going to sit there as a child, as anybody really, not even as my husband, and tell me what I can and can't do 
with my body, especially not when you're 16. There is a lot of things that we are not privy to and I'm sure Leon isn't privy to. So for Leon to sit there and say the things that Leon is saying, I can't help but think that Leon has overheard some of the conversations that Cody and their mom has had. Leon walks off crying about the situation and Mary says that she's sorry. I just can't relate to this. I feel like Mary gets guilt trip from her husband, from her children, and from some of the wives, mainly Robin, because they continue to make this an issue. They continue to have this as a topic of discussion. The woman can't have children. The woman struggles to have them. And until she has some more or unless she brings it up, I don't feel like it should be a discussion for everyone. It stresses her out. It builds up her anxiety. She cries and, and says what she says and it just makes me uncomfortable and I'm not even in the situation. Mary says it's stressful to her. I feel like it's stressful to Mary because Mary doesn't want it. But if Mary comes out and says that she doesn't want it and if she comes out and says she doesn't want to do the surrogacy, sir, surrogacy, then she's made to be seen as the bad guy because as Leon said earlier, like you're being given this gift and why don't you just take it? Cody then adds and says, I'm with Leon sometimes, Mary. I don't see why this is hard. Everybody's just trying to support you, which goes that guilt trip that I was talking about once again. If they truly supported Mary, they'd leave it alone. Mary doesn't do well with pressure and they keep pressuring her, Cody and Robin in particular, about it and now Leon. And Mary gets an attitude and then Mary shuts down, cries and doesn't want to talk about it. And Cody doesn't respond well to Mary's emotions. So where are we getting here? We then go to Christine, who lets us know that she is tired of living like a single mom. She's ready to get back as a family. We see them arrive and talk to Mona because this is where they're going to find out if they qualify or not for these homes. Mona asks the question, what would happen if only three of you were to qualify? I hate that TLC did this crap. I don't know if it was TLC or Mona. I think that Mona was trash for this because Mona already knew what the results were. Instead of sitting there and having them worry, just come out and say what happened. She said, remember how I told you all that you had to be really careful with your payments, that you have to pay everything on time, and you've done that, right? And Christine lets it be known that she made a couple of, of water bill payments late. And Robin is sitting in the confessional with her mouth open because Christine says she made some payments late. And Cody says, your water bill isn't going to be a problem. The problem is going to be basically whether him, Janelle, and Robin qualify. Mona hands out the approval letters and... Robin and no not Robin Mary and Cody are approved Christine's approved she's excited she starts uh crying and said how she failed at a lot of things including her weight so this is a big deal to her and I could feel her when she said it Janelle is approved and Janelle is shocked and I don't understand how the person who handles money is so shocked that she's approved what does Janelle know that we don't know that Janelle's so shocked that she was approved they then drag this whole thing out with Robin talking about how no matter what happens that she's going to make sure that they get these houses and how she doesn't want to be a stumbling block to them and all these tears and, and all this other stuff. And we find out that she's been approved. And when we find out she's been approved, they all seem emotional despite Robin's debt and Christine forgetting to pay a water bill. They did it. Um, they then hear from Mona as long as they get their contracts in and they make all their decisions, they can start uh, building in five weeks. Honey, I dropped the ball on the moving thing, on getting a home, because at the height of the pandemic was the best time for me to look. And I was helping my mother look for hers 
And by the time I finished helping my mom and how stressful it was trying to find what she liked and having the, the property um, get uh, looked at and make sure we passed the inspection and getting our own person and doing all these things and bidding and getting contracts and not getting things. By the time it all was done, I was like, I'm going to wait another year because I don't want to settle. And honey, if those rates haven't gone up and if people haven't gotten ridiculous with what they're putting down, uh, it is a big accomplishment to have a home and the Browns should be proud of themselves. And the fact that they were able to do this, whether it was with TLC or not, good for them, but they jacked it all up. <laughs> We then see them letting the kids know that they they got approved and the kids are kind of excited, but they're debating whether or not they believe it. They then take the kids to the property, show the kids where they're going to be. And for the first time, we see the excitement from the children. You all, I thought that overall this episode was good. I have a feeling that these videos are going to have a lot more length to them because it seems like we're getting closer to an hour show. Let me know. Seriously, let me know what y'all thought of this episode down below. And if you didn't watch the episode, let me know what you thought of the review. Like, based on something I said, do you think that Leon was wrong for expressing themselves the way they did? I'm not saying don't allow Leon to have their feelings. I'm just saying I feel like it's just a bunch of people guilt tripping Mary. And I felt bad for her in that moment. That's all I'm saying. Like, comment, subscribe, row to 400, and then a 1,000. <laughs> Let's go. Until next time, you guys.